This episode of the LCTV News is brought to you by Columbia Insurance Agency. Serving the Lynn community for over 60 years with home, auto, and business insurance. Hello and welcome to the LCTV News. I'm Mukala Kabongo. In this edition of the LCTV News, Mayor McGee endorses Markey, Navigators add to front office, Lynn Housing Forum, Lynn Grows Celebration, Sit Down with Greater Lynn Senior Services, and more. Mayor McGee became one of 20 Massachusetts mayor to endorse Ed Markey in his re-election for the U.S. Senate, joining mayors from communities such as Worcester, Somerville, Revere, Malden, and others. The senator, the senator has also received endorsements from other members of the Lynn State delegation, which includes Senator Brendan Crichton, State Representative Daniel Cahill, Peter Capano, and Laurie Ehrlich. Challenging Markey for the U.S. Senate seat is longtime lawyer Shannon Liss Riordain. Liss Riordain has been at the forefront for fighting for women's rights as well as workers' rights. With, with these experiences, she is hoping it will lead her to the U.S. Senate seat. Senator Markey has served on the U.S. Senate, Senate for the past six years and has led the charge on environmental issues. Last April, he had a Green New Deal forum town hall in Lynn, Mass. Markey has also led legislation to protect consumers, address the opioid epidemic, internet privacy concerns, and net neutrality. The North Shore Navigators are welcoming back two members to their press box team, as well as a member, as new member to their front office staff. Lynn native Chris Holy will be joining the Navigators as the team's new director of sales. Holy is a Lynn English High alum where he taught math for four years and an alum of Salem State University. Currently, Holy is an assistant manager at Beverly Municipal Federal Credit Union. Navigators General Manager Derek January also announced that Gus Balo and Joshua Cummins will be returning to the Fraser Field press box for the 2020 season. This will be the duo's third season in the press box. Baylor, a senior at St. John's Prep, is the announcer for St. John's Prep football, basketball, and baseball teams. He also serves as the play-by-play -play commentator on selected live streaming broadcast for the school. Cummins is the director of media relations who is responsible for writing and distributing press releases, game recaps, and other written content for the Navigator's website and local media outlets. Helps maintain the team's social media channels and serves as the primary communications contact. More players have also been added to the North Shore Navigators 2020 roster. The Navigators add St. Leo University first baseman James McCullum and left-handed pitcher Jet Walsh from Flagler College. McCullum, a native of Bulk Bulkham Hills, is the first player in Navigators history who hails from outside of North America. McCullum is a sophomore at St. Leo University where he earned most valuable player. First team all Central Valley Conference and second team all, all Norco honors in 2019. Walsh in his freshman season won eight of 12 starts in, his, in the freshman season. The Navigators now have three players on their roster from Flagler College. The Navs kick off their season on May 27th. Lynn Playgrounds as well as the Lynn Commons will soon get a new look as the City Community Development Project coordinators are preparing to draft plans to apply for federal and state funding. This is, the, this is a part of the multi-year, multi-million Lynn Common makeover. The city also plans to begin the application process in April or May for the state grant that will allocate at least $400,000 to go towards Barry Park. Over the past year, the city has done work for improvements of the many parks in the community. On Warren Street, Bennett Street, and Williams Avenue playgrounds have seen structural improvements. On Thursday, the Lynn School Committee voted to change the Early Childhood Program. The unanimous vote came after the head of the Lynn Public Schools Physical Therapy Department, Joanne Gaines Dupree, spoke to the committee about the challenges the department faces with the current model of the pre-K. Pre Currently, the pre-K model is students have, a full, students have a full day of classes two to three days a week. 
the cost to change back to a five day, half day schedule is there is no benefit to the students in having them only attend classes to two, for two to three days. Students are unable to develop a routine and have difficulties managing classroom expectations. With the model, with the model going back to a five day, half day schedule, students would attend AM or PM classes every weekday. The change will, res will result in an increase of $165,000 in transportation costs. On Monday afternoon, a fire to a three-family home on Clarendon Ave has displaced nine people. According to Fire Chief Stephen Archer, fire crews were notified by the Lynn police who were on patrol around 2.45 p.m. After an, after an investigation, it was determined that there were no working smoke detectors throughout the house. Nobody was, hurt during, nobody was hurt during the fire. Lynn Fire Department has determined that the cause of a fire that damaged a commercial building in Central Square Saturday morning was caused by roof repair work. Shortly before 11 a.m., Lynn firefighters responded to 7 Central Square. They were able to have the fire under control by 11.40 a.m. The fire was caused by a heating element that was used for repair work of the rubber roof. The fire was deemed accidental and no one was hurt. Now time for the police to update. A Salem, woman, a Salem woman was taken to Massachusetts General Hospital after being shot twice on Grant Street. Lynn police responded to the incident after the victim's friend contacted them. The young woman was shot in the, her arm and stomach and underwent surgery. Her injuries, although were serious, they were deemed as non-life threatening. No arrests have yet been made in this incident. Early Thursday morning, Lynn police arrested a young man for numerous traffic violations. Collins Musica was arrested and charged with operating under the influence, negligent operation of a motor vehicle, and marked lanes violation. On Wednesday evening, Lynn police arrested and charged Juan Lolasco Chavez with operating under the influence, alcohol from an open container in a motor vehicle, and unlicensed operation of a motor vehicle. Also on Wednesday, Lynn police arrested and charged Carabeth Pena with assault and battery in the presence of a, office, of a police officer. The annual MLK Day of Service took place on Monday, January 20th at Lynn Tech and LCTV was on hand. Project. So today on Martin Luther King's National Service Day, we're here at Lynn Tech offering a workshop, a cultural sharing workshop. To give back to our community like this in such a way, especially on MLK. The mission is to make 800 cards for elder folks who are living um, in the community and also for veterans who may not have somebody to give them a Valentine's Day card here. Giving back to the Lynn community on Martin Luther King Day writing letters to soldiers. Um, I'm helping out just supplying sentence frames in all different ways. Doing our commitment to this work over the course of the year in our everyday lives. And so I'm inspired by the young people and the organizations that were here. It's going to be a wonderful day. Um, but we look forward to a powerful year of uplifting humanity uh, ahead. Community. It's just, this was just an amazing day today. Uh, packed house over here at Lynn Tech, and uh, we can't just say enough about the memory of uh, Dr. King. Sharing the vision of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and getting out and making a difference. They're out on a day of service, uh, uh, going uh, different places and, and making a difference. So it's, it was great to be here and get a chance to speak to uh, a room full of people that understand what this day is all about. Martin Luther King Day of Service. I think it's the honor uh, and following the footsteps that Martin Luther King Day isn't just a day off, it's really a day on. Um, it's the National Day of Service and I think the real way to honor Dr. King's legacy is to go out there into the community and serve. Bookmarks are going to be at the library, so if you want to go to the library and go get these bookmarks, you can. Him, making some artwork for today, try to do some nice for the community. Importantly, as a mom, I like to teach my son what it looks like when we don't just 
This is my son Emmanuel and what it looks like when we don't just talk about service and talk about our role models and trying to be like them, but we actually engage in those activities that show that we really truly believe in the things that we say and we put in the time to serve others. On Thursday evening, LCTV was on hand for a mural unveiling at Estefani's restaurant. Artist Michael Agahoa mural is a depiction of the images of the city of Lynn. So my family um, is actually from Guatemala and El Salvador and we actually decided on the concept of um, this mural with Mike. Um, if you can see carefully here in the mural, I'm here in the middle. Um, my father to my left, my grandfather to his left, and my mother to the right. Within the mural you see a bunch of different people that in the Latino community in Central America specifically, we actually grew up seeing. So you can go back here and you're listening to mariachis in the morning, and that's typical in a Central American household. What I truly loved about the painting was that Mike made this vision come true, but it also has little accents of what makes Lin Lin. Like you see High Rock Tower to our left, and then you see the beautiful Quetzal, which is the national bird of Guatemala that goes into the Bienvenido, which is welcome, and into the Boston skyline. He truly made it a masterpiece and made the vision come true of what's to come. The mural altogether took six weeks it, uh, on and off. So I was working on weekends and I was working at the Greg House at the time. So I would just come in when in, in all the extra time that I had. In my personal work, family and tradition in, in Lynn, is strong in my work and so when Stephanie came to me with this concept it, it felt perfect and it felt like just the type of work that I want to be doing and I couldn't have asked for a better place you know I, I'm very honored to have a mural in my hometown. Yes. February is Black History Month and the Lynn Public Library's Freedom Agenda exhibit is a showcase of African-American contribution that helped shape the U.S. LCTV's David Riley Jr. spoke with the organizers about the exhibit. have the Freedom's Agenda exhibit at the Lynn Public Library for the months of January and February. This exhibit is telling uh, the story of enslaved African Americans and how they petitioned the Massachusetts courts for various things, be it their freedom or education or um, just to be a part of equality in the state of Massachusetts. I wanted to bring this exhibit here because it's about black history in this state. Like it's relevant, you know, to Massachusetts. It's not just, you know, talking about the South or talking about different areas of United States. It's specifically speaking of the black experience in our state of Massachusetts. So I wanted to bring that bring that here and have people experience that. And um, I hope that you can come down. The Commonwealth Museum will be picking it up on the 27th of February, so you have time to come down. This part of the library, the adult um, section of the library, is open mostly till 9 p.m. during the week. So the community is able to access the exhibit and take advantage and learn something about black history.
residents gathered at the Lynn Neighborhood Housing Authority for a forum on housing, and LCTV was in attendance. Well, tonight it's great to see you. a full house here. Uh, this is uh, first the beginning of um, what's going to be close to a year-long process of creating this home product, a housing production plan. Uh, it's really important that you're here tonight, but more importantly, you stay engaged and that everybody's input is really essential to us coming up with the right proposals, the right plans that we can work together on. So uh, I'm, I'm really encouraged to see such a, uh, a full house tonight, a cross-section of the community. And, and as I've said, as we've been getting ready to get this and, and help this kick off, uh, is that you continue to spread the word so that we want people throughout the community to continue to give their input, be part of the process. That's how it's going to be successful. So again, it's great to have you all here tonight. It's good to see it beginning and uh, we've got some great facilitators and I want to thank MAPC for the work they're doing, uh, Lynn Housing Authority and others are helping work on this and, and I always like to thank my staff, Megan Hamill, um, who really works hard to coordinate uh, many of these events and, and thanks to all the hard work that's going into this. But this is about all of us together in our community and and like I said I'm really excited to see all of you here tonight and and stay engaged be a part of this and and we really want to find uh, uh, some really good solutions that will help uh, move our community for, forward together so again thanks for being here uh, and um, I'm excited about this uh, this plan as we move forward but I want to give you an overview of the plan for those of you who aren't familiar with it so first of all as I mentioned my name is Karina I'm the Chief of Housing and Neighborhood Development at MAPC. MAPC is the Regional Planning Agency for Greater Boston, so we're a quasi-government organization. We're also mission-based. We're committed to advancing equity, spreading smart growth, and facilitating regional collaboration for 101 cities and towns of Greater Boston. So that's Boston, Lynn, and 99 other cities and towns. LCTV went to breed Wednesday night for a forum on saving Kings Lynn. Here's more from Wednesday night's forum. Kings Lynn's voice for affordable and respect an independent group of Kings Lynn residents. That's us. That's who invited you here. And our purpose is to, ad to advocate for affordable affordability for current and future residents in all income categories, low, moderate, and market. To get more residents of all backgrounds actively involved in the community to create better process for resolving problems and improving quality of life. To protect the right of all residents to be treated with fairness and respect. To protect the right of all residents to participate in making decisions about our own community. I just wanted to get that off for everybody to know and understand and know where we're coming from and how we want to be treated and we want you to be treated. Thank you, Isaac. Uh, thanks for, for having us. This is a great turnout here and uh, I just want to say a couple of words. I uh, want to know that there's a lot of people that uh, support the idea of maintaining uh, low, moderate income uh, housing for residents of Glen. There's, there's not enough of it and we want to maintain what we do have. I'll say for myself, uh, yeah, I remember uh, America Park a long time ago. Uh, you know, I used to hang around there and what, what we had at King's Lynn compared to what we had before and how it's grown and been maintained over the years 
is not only a model for Lynn, it's a model for the whole country and something that we want to keep, keep and should be something that is replicated everywhere. So uh, for myself, I know we have uh, the mayor's, uh, we have representative from the mayor's office here, from uh, representative of Crichton's uh, office and uh, the Lynn Housing Authority. Uh, we have uh, Nita and the board up there. Everybody has been working really hard just to get us to this point here. So I don't want to go on and on. I want to know that we are all here to support the tenants in any way we can. So we have a presentation that is being given tonight and it, when it comes to make, making a decision on uh, the best opportunity for maintaining the quality uh, housing that we have here at, at, at King's Lent, um, that whatever comes out of, comes out of it uh, is, is what we want to support. And anything we can do to, to bring us from point A to point B, uh, we're, all, we're here to help you. Now for the sports update. A state tournament berth is still in sight for the Lynn Classical Lady Rams after their 66-25 victory over Malden last night. Sajada Dean had a career night for the Lady Rams as she poured in 17 points, grabbed 5 rebounds, and added 6 steals. The Rams' full-court press defense helped spark their offense as they opened the game on a 13-2 run. The game was all but wrapped up in the second quarter as the Rams outscored Malden 22-6 to take a 39-9 lead at the half. Sitting at 6-8 on the season, the Lady Rams hope to put a string of games together to give themselves a chance at clinching a state tournament bid. The Lady Rams are back on the court tonight as they take on Saugus. The classical men's basketball team has now dropped three games in a row after their 58-55 loss to Malden last night in Malden. A poor shooting third quarter led Malden's comeback after they played well on the offensive end early in the game. The Rams are, the Rams are one win away from clinching a state tournament bid as, as they sit at 9-6. They hope to clinch tonight as they take on Saugus on the road. The Lynn English Lady Bulldogs are now 10-2 on the season after their 42-45 loss to Bishop Fenwick Wednesday night. Despite creating 26 turnovers, the Bulldogs had difficulties putting the ball in the basket. English missed 9 free throws in the first half. The Lady Bulldogs played from behind throughout the game, trailing by as many as 10 points. Trailing by 4 with 50 seconds left. Bishop Fenwick's Veronica Tash took a charge that gave Fenwick the possession and they would all but capitalize on the offensive end with a layup by Maria or Fanos to put the game away. Michelle Johnson led the Bulldogs with 19 points, including four three-pointers. Kalia Reynosa added 12 points. The Lady Bulldogs travel to Winthrop tonight. Lynn Tech Lady Tigers are still three wins away from clinching a state tournament bid after their 50-27 loss to Shashim Wednesday night. The Tigers got a big game from Alonja Sanchez, who led, the, who led the way with 16 points. Neil Majuana was also in double figures with 10 points. The Lady Tigers, who are 7-8 on the season, look to get back on the winning track tonight as they travel to take on Fellowship. St. Mary's Lady Spartan have now, have now won 16 games in a row since their season opening loss. The Lady Spartans took down Catholic's Central League rival Archbishop Williams 73-51 to improve to 16-1 on the season. Four Spartans were in double figures led by Maya Bergdorf who had 17 points and added 7 rebounds. Gabby Torres also had a big game with 13 points and 6 rebounds. Ursi Quelez and Janice Avellino each had 10 points. Tonight the Lady Spartans Look to make it 17 in a row as they take on Arlington Catholic. Tip-off is at 6.30 p.m. On the men's side, St. Mary's men's basketball team are now 13-2 on the season after their 68-56 victory over Archbishop Williams Monday night. Sammy Baptista had a big night from beyond the arc as he knocked down five three-pointers and had a game-high 21 points. Joey Abate Walsh added 17 points and five rebounds. After being off the past few days, the Spartans are back on the court tonight as they travel for another, Cat for another Catholic Central League matchup against Arlington Catholic. The Lynn English Bulldogs continued their dominance in the Northeastern Conference after their 90-60 victory over Gloucester Tuesday night. 
senior John L. Guzman led the way with 30 points. Guzman knocked down. Guzman was hot from beyond the arc as he knocked down eight three-pointers. Guzman was not the only Bulldogs who had a big night. Center Ademide Badmus put together another double-double with 19 points to go along with 13 rebounds. Mason Jean Baptiste was not far behind in the scoring as he poured in 18 points and grabbed four rebounds. The Bulldogs host Winthrop tonight. Tip Academy has clinched a bid for the state tournament after their 71-58 victory over Minutemen. The Panthers were led by Win Winfred Sanchez and Ricky Mastre. Sanchez had 16 points to lead the way and Mastre had 14 points. Kip, now, Kip is now 10-3 on the season. And with last night, Kip is actually 11-3 on the season after last night's victory. The Boston College Eagles are now 10-11 on the season and 4-6 in ACC conference play after their 69-86 loss to 6th-ranked Louisville Cardinals Wednesday night at Conte Forum. The Eagles had a hard time defending Cardinals junior Jordan Norway, who had a game-high 37 points, which included going 7-14 from 14 from beyond the arc. Norway was two points shy of tying the most points scored by an opponent at Conte Forum, which is currently 39 points, held by Richard Hamilton. Here's post-game reactions from players and coaches. You guys, you guys running your offense, you guys were very patient. Even when they came early with that huge surge and the scoring surge, you guys were still patient in your offense and getting your stuff together. Can you talk about that? We were very fortunate that uh, our offense was was uh, doing what it needed to do to, to really stay in the game. We could have easily found ourselves down 15 points. Um, again, I thought Darius Perry got off to a great start shooting the ball. Uh, Jordan did as well. and. Uh, you know, we, we were we were fortunate to be within, you know, four or five points there after about six, seven minutes because it could have easily been, like I said, 15. And sometimes you just have nights like that. I'm just trying to get to the run because if I can get there, they're probably going to have to follow me to stop me from scoring. So, you know, it's just something I've, I've been practicing again with Taylor. Uh, I think it's, it's been paying off. Did you, did you sense a little frustration because there was a point where there was a few quick, quickly taking shots by a team when you guys were making a little run? Yeah, we just, I mean, guys were trying to get too much back too quick. We just got to execute. You know, we, we didn't execute very well. But uh, I thought they did. A couple times there was some frustration because we shot quick balls for no reason. You know, just trying to get, you know, guy, guys single handedly trying to get us back in the game. It never works. Boston Celtics have now won five out of their last six games after their 119-104 victory over the Golden State Warriors last night at the TD Garden. Gordon Hayward led the way as he put together his fourth straight 20-point game as he led all scores with 25 points. Joining Hayward in the 20-point column was Jason Tatum and Marcus Smart. Smart had 21 points off the bench and knocked down five three-pointers. Tatum, who was named an All-Star for the first time, finished with 20 points to go along with six rebounds. The green team are back on the court tomorrow night as they host the 76ers. Tip-off is at 8.30 p.m. On this week's Lynn Lowdown, we sat down with Julie O'Brien from the Greater Lynn Senior Services. Here is this week's Lowdown. Hello and welcome to the Lynn Lowdown. This is the first Lynn Lowdown interview of 2020 with Jillian O'Brien. How are you? Good, thank you. How's everything? Good, thanks. Had a great new year? Yes. Yeah. How's your, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. You know, we went from 69 degrees Sunday over the weekend to it's about to snow tomorrow. So, mm. Massachusetts for you. Mm, yeah. All right. So, you, you got a lot going on at Greater Lynn Senior Services, and you're here to talk about the new program. I said it wrong the first time, so I'm going to let you say it. Ombudsman um, Program. Ombudsman um, Program, long-term care program. Yeah. So tell me, what is this program that you guys have? The Long-Term Care Ombudsman Program is a federally and state mandated program. Mm -hmm. And it's overseen by the state ombudsman. And what we do is we advocate for nursing home and rest home residents. We advocate for quality of care, for resident rights. Mm -hmm. um, 
what we do is we basically go inside the nursing home yeah. and talk with residents and find out if they're being cared for okay, if they have any complaints mm -hmm. that they need resolved. And then we take it from there. Yeah. We talk to a contact person mm -hmm. and try to resolve the complaints that they have. So what the nursing homes, what, or is it just nursing homes in the region or the nursing homes that GLIS you know, works with? It's the nursing homes that GLIS covers. Okay, and so with, with this long-term care, now you said that you guys go in. What are, just tell me a little bit about some of the benefits that you guys, that the elderly receive from have, being part of this program, uh, the nursing homes receive from being part of this program. Mm -hmm. what, what are some of the benefits? They have somebody to come in that is independent from the nursing home mm -hmm. and can listen to them and make sure that their rights are being upheld, make sure that the nursing home feels like a home. Mm -hmm. We listen to their concerns and we advocate for their rights. What, in your experience, uh, what are some of the concerns that you see as probably the most, the most frequent, the, or the most popular that you would say that you guys receive? There's concerns ranging from I can't reach my call bell to I'm not sure if I'm going to have a safe discharge, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah, and, and there's more. Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. There's more serious concerns too, yeah. such as um, abuse, mm -hmm. neglect, misappropriation. Yeah, and you and working with the outside, some with someone outside is. The results is you, you feel like the, they'd get a better result than you know, dealing with in, internal? Yes. And the reason that is is because the ombud, the long-term care ombudsman is unique in the fact that it, we're not mandated reporters. So mm -hmm. residents can really feel comfortable talking with us because we're completely resident directed. Yeah. So if a resident did tell us a concern that they didn't want us to move forward with, we wouldn't have to move forward with that concern. Mm -hmm. So it's great that we're independent from the nursing home. Yeah, and from, from what I was reading, from what I understand, that in this, in this long-term care program, you have, it's staffed by GLIS volunteers? Yes. Okay, how many volunteers do you guys usually do you guys It ranges practice? from 8 to 13, mm -hmm. yeah. And for those, for those that, where do you guys find the volunteers, or where do you guys, <laughs> how do the volunteers come to you guys, as you can see? Sometimes people surf the internet looking for volunteer opportunities opportunities and come across Gradolin Senior Services website mm -hmm. and find interest in the Ombudsman program through that. Other times we send out um, public service announcements or bulk emails. Mm -hmm. We might drop off flyers at local churches, things like that. All right, and for the volunteers, is there a training that they have to go through? To, uh, to, what's the training they have to go to to get certified by the state? Yeah, there is a three day certification training um, and it's a classroom style training and then there's ongoing training from there more on site with me mm -hmm. or another volunteer all right is it like do they do they go to the to the specific nursing home and get to meet the residents and just have a, a sit down just to see how the operation works how everything works yep it's like, yep, it's kind of like that. It's a walkthrough. They might shadow us for a little while. Well, they're definitely going to shadow us for a little while and see how we do it. Mm -hmm. And then eventually they start going on their own, but we're kind of shadowing them now and watching and supporting them. Yeah, it's... it's <laughs> How long do you guys uh, do you guys shadow them before you just free them? Be like, all right, you guys, we don't need to <laughs> we don't need to shadow you. You guys, we think you guys are fine to be by yourself at this point. There is a time requirement, but it's we we go by the requirement. But after that, it's when somebody feels comfortable. Mm -hmm. Also, it all it, it all depends on the resident. Yeah, we no, it depends oh, on the volunteer. volunteer. We wouldn't just leave a volunteer that doesn't feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. We would make sure that they understand that they can contact me anytime and 
understand their responsibilities and have made a great relationship with the nursing home um, residents and contact staff at the nursing home mm -hmm. in, able to, in order to um, resolve complaints. Yeah. Now for the program, how long, how long has this program been around? How long, and how long have you guys been involved with this program? Or if, you, if you know. It's if you longer, know than longer than me. <laughs> longer than me. Um, I think it, now just trying to remember the text that I read, I think the 70s, so, I think. I could be wrong about before that. Before my time. <laughs> As we, right, so, so now you got this going on, so, you know, moving forward, what, what, is, what are some factors or key important things that the public needs to know about this program and if they wanna, if they wanna help out in any, in any type of way? Mm -hmm. I think it would be great if everybody knows about the program and what, it, what we do in the long-term care ombudsman program. I think it's good for people to know that we can answer questions in regards to long-term care. It doesn't have to be just complaints inside of a nursing home. Mm -hmm. um, if somebody has any questions on placing a loved one, they could give us a call and we could help guide them and give them a little more tools to mm -hmm. be able to do that a little bit more comfortably. And we also take calls in from family members mm -hmm. about concerns in the nursing home. Okay. Even though we're really resident directed and we would go to the resident and see if they want us to work on it, we do take the calls from caregivers and family members and friends from the community if they have any concerns. So it's good for people to know that they can reach out to the long-term care ombudsman program at Greater Lynn Senior Services to help with anything, information in the nursing home, concerns in the nursing home. Uh, uh, this is just for me personally. Uh, so the program, it, it's just specifically for nursing home, you guys. It doesn't do no like I, home care or anything of that nature. I have been saying nursing homes, but I think I did mention that it is nursing homes and rest homes. If I haven't mentioned that, then it is. It's oh. nursing homes and rest homes. Okay, okay, okay. So. <laughs> All right, that, 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 answer my, that answers my question. Now, now for more, if, if folks want to get involved, should they come to the Gliss office or should they go on the, web, the website? For volunteers? Yes. If volunteers want to get involved, they can reach out to me by phone or email. Mm -hmm. And um, just let me know. We can set up an interview. I can give them more information. Yeah, what is the need right now? For Is the, is the need pretty high right now or is it... Or is whoever comes will will just take them. Well, there is. We do have an opening. We have a couple openings. Mm -hmm. um, we have an opening in the Lynn area right now, and we have a couple openings in the Cambridge area. Okay. For um, volunteering. Okay. For two and days. what other areas do you guys serve? So. Right now, there's nursing homes or rest homes in Saugus, Lynn, Nahant, Cambridge, and Somerville. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. All right. We got about a minute left. So, one more time, if they folks need to know more information or if they just want to get involved, please tell them where to go. Greater Lynn Senior Services Long-Term Care Ombudsman Program, and my name is Jillian O'Brien, and I am the program director. All right. Make sure you contact her if you want to be a volunteer or if you just want to know more about the program, if you want to do some research, if you have questions, if you have a loved one that may need to be in that program, contact her and she'll give you all the help that you need. Thank you. That wasn't so bad, was it? Yes. It was? <laughs> <laughs>And now time for some upcoming local events. Tonight from 6 p.m. until 8 p.m., the Lit English High School Class of 2021 will be hosting a multicultural festival. The night will be filled with cultural displays and guests will be exposed to a variety of cultures. The event is free and open to the public. On Saturday, February 1st, Grindhouse Recordings will be hosting its Hip Hop for Charity event at the Knights of Pythias on Maple Street. The night will consist of performances from local artists as well as surprises throughout the evening. The show is set to begin at 7 p.m. and all ticket proceeds will be donated to Habitat Plus. The Knights of Columbus will be having an open house this Sunday, February 2nd from 2 p.m. until 4 p.m. 
During the open house, there will be a showcase of charitable, charitable output as well as a look ahead of future events. LCTV's next Paramount film series will take place on Monday, February 10th. The movie choice for February is Sleepless in Seattle. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. Movie begins at 7 p.m. Free popcorn and beverages will be available. Thank you for watching the LCTV News. Like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And visit us at lintv.org to watch any show anytime on your computer, tablet, or phone. I'm Mukal Kabongo. Have a great day.